up guys, it's BT here and this is the review of the Alienware AW2518H Full HD Monitor. Now what's so special about this 25 inch TN monitor is not that it has a 1 millisecond response time, nor is it the fact that it comes with G-Sync or FreeSync, nor is it the fact that Ninja uses it, but that it has a native refresh rate of 240Hz and a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Now this is my first 240Hz monitor. My monitor before this was actually an Acer Predator 27 inch, 165 hertz for reference so I wanted to really test this and see if it's worth using over some of the other options on the market and if I can actually tell if there's a difference so today guys I'm gonna be letting you guys know what I found when it comes to this beast of a monitor and to see whether it's worth that $500 price tag now in the box you're gonna find a display cable a USB 3.0 upstream cable and a power cable as well as the monitor and the monitor stand now in the past I've used Alienware monitors and all of them have this in common this ugly big monitor stand that just spans your desk taking up so much space alienware i didn't need a whole alien spaceship on my desk it does have a slot where you can run your cables up the back but if you're using like a large or xl pad or a extended mouse pad like i have on my desk right here it actually gets in the way I definitely recommend getting a monitor arm for this monitor, especially if you don't have that deep of a desk like I do. The stand will allow you to actually turn the monitor left and right and up and down and also turn it around into portrait mode. But what I didn't like is if you wanna move this monitor closer to you, obviously those little uh, feet or stands or whatever are gonna get in the way of you gaming. So kind of defeats the purpose. You're putting out this amazing gaming monitor, yet you have something that will get in the way of gaming. Alienware, what are you doing? As for the ports on the monitor, you're gonna have a display 1.2, an audio out, a headphone jack up front, and you're gonna have four USB 3.0s, two of which are right up front underneath the Alienware logo on the front of the monitor. It's also got one upstream USB 3.0 port on the back, and what upstream does, or it allows for, is for your monitor to actually act like a USB hub, so you can connect whatever you want, transfer data, use a mouse, whatever floats your boat. Outside of that, this monitor has amazingly small bezels around the edge which I absolutely love and it's got RGB on the back side of the monitor that can be customized which is actually pretty cool. The menus have the usual suspects such as brightness and contrast with different gaming presets. I leave everything at normal. I leave the response time at normal because when you start to move up to like that fast and super fast it really messes with the image and the monitor becomes uh, too unstable in my opinion. Now this monitor is a TM panel so you're gonna get the best viewing angles when you're looking at this thing straight on. It's it's got 160 to 170 degrees for the viewing angles and I found them to be not bad but it's a TN panel. It's not going to be like a VA or a IPS. So for most people, this won't be a problem because you're going to be looking at this monitor straight on. Uh, so yeah, you don't have to worry about that because this is a gamer focused monitor. Yeah, I don't see you like going down or going to the left or having this angled. You should have it straight on and having that 240 hertz of goodness straight in your face. It's got contrast ratios of 1000 to 1, which is decent for a TM panel. It also has 400 nits of brightness and a resolution of 1920 by 1080. I do have to say that this is one of my favorite TM panels that I've ever used because of the colors. The blacks don't look washed out or faded like some other panels that I've used in the past. It almost has that IPS feel to it, but not quite. Overall though, I must say that the picture quality on this is actually really good. Uh, I might be eating my words in a little bit when I try some of the other 240 hertz monitors, but for now, this panel has blown me away and its picture quality is actually pretty good. I've actually done some color grading on my videos with this monitor and I think the colors turned out pretty great. It's also great when you wanna watch movies or you know, you wanna watch some of uh, BT's uh, YouTube videos. Shameless plug. I must say though, I do miss having 1440p as it makes everything just look a little bit more sharper. But this monitor is really focused towards the esports professionals out there and people that really take gaming seriously and don't really care about sharpness. They just wanna have that performance. Now this monitor does have G-Sync and that smooths out and eliminates tearing. If you've ever used a G-Sync monitor before, you know that it is night and day when you're using one that doesn't have it. So let's move on to the million dollar question. Can I tell the difference between 144 hertz and 240 hertz? And I think I've come up with the best description 
on the difference. You know, going from like a 60 hertz to 144 hertz monitor, your eyes will see a significant difference. It'll look overly smooth and it's a whole new world. When you go from like 144 hertz to 240 hertz, your eyes are less of a factor and it becomes more of a feeling when you're playing. You'll have more frames to work with per second, so when there is action in a game, let's say you drop from 240 FPS to 200 FPS, it's gonna affect your gameplay less than if you are using a 144 Hertz panel where you have 144 FPS and you drop to 80 FPS during an intense battle. That's when you actually definitely see a difference in overall smoothness and it can affect your gameplay and shots, causing you to be less consistent overall. In Apex, personally, I would get stuttering when my FPS would drop below 100 FPS, and I would miss shots, but not anymore. I found that I've become way more consistent in my shots since getting this monitor, and that's just facts. For reference, I am using a 1080 Ti, and you'll want to use at least a 1070 to get the most out of this monitor. My tracking in Overwatch has become god tier instantly, and I hadn't played that game in months. Okay, well. I'm still trash, but still, my eyes enjoyed every second, and I couldn't believe my eyes at how well I was tracking targets. It was just simply amazing. It's like you can see exactly where your opponents are with no input lag, causing you to be more accurate and more consistent in game. If you are playing competitively or you are just a competitive person like myself, this monitor is definitely worth looking at. Going up from a 240Hz monitor from a 144Hz monitor, you won't really notice a difference, but once you get used to the 240Hz, you'll definitely feel it when you move back down in refresh rate. Personally, I think most people will be perfectly fine with a 144 hertz monitor, but if you're in the market for a new monitor and want the best of the best experience with little to no input lag, I really think this monitor is worth looking at. Just don't expect to be blown away, but instead look to feel the difference and see your consistency as a whole go up. As a whole, I can say my accuracy did go up once I got adjusted to this monitor, even in Kovacs. So, all right, guys, I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you guys for watching, for all of your support. Thank you for liking, sharing, and commenting. I will see you in the next one. It has been your boy, BT, saying peace.